Hey guys, it's Mr. Stark. I'd like to give you a quick lesson on the control transformer. So what you're looking at is two separate diagrams that are on the front of your typical control transformers that you would have uh, for anything having to do with industrial motor controls where you're trying to step down the voltage and you're usually stepping down the voltage from the uh, source of the motor control center. You'd find these inside control cabinets and, you know, everywhere else having to do with motor controls. So these two diagrams are really the two diagrams that are on the front of this control transformer. So if you're kind of getting a good view here, I know there's a little light and a little glare. This diagram is separate from this diagram. This first diagram simply shows you the coil configuration inside this iron core transformer. There's your iron core symbol. And if you remember from your PowerPoints and your previous lessons, uh, we are actually making voltage from the primary and we're inducing it onto the secondary. So this top two coils up here on the drawing represent the primary coil, which is your input power. The bottom coil represents your output power, what you're trying to achieve with your induction. So we've actually got two coils on the primary and one coil on the secondary. And you might remember this from theory. Uh, really in this, this particular lab, I'm putting 120 volts on the primary. I could either put 120 or 240 on the primary as you can see with the wiring tap uh, diagram I could put 120 and achieve 24 volts or I could put 240 and achieve 24 volts and it's all a matter if I wire them in series or in parallel so in this particular lab we're putting 120 volts into my circuit and we're trying to achieve 24 volts out of it. So if you did some simple math, you'd see that when we do the division on this, we'd end up with 5. And basically what that means is there's 5 times as many turns of wire on the primary than there is on the secondary. So because we just did a ratio, 120 to 24, and we came up with 5. My drawing actually represents that. If you look at this closely, you'll see that I attempted to draw more turns on the primary, more turns on the primary, than on the secondary. I tried to make it look like there's less turns on the secondary with less little loops. So that's really how those represent when you're seeing those diagrams. They're trying to show you as coil windings or turns really, so you get a good illustration. So five times as many on the primary than the secondary. And uh, that's a pretty much that's a five to one ratio. So with that being said, I got 120 volts coming in, 24 volts coming out. How do we read the core or the coil winding drawing? You just pretty much look at it for what it is. This is one wire where it stops from screw to screw. These kind of cross over each other. They don't touch inside the transformer. So here's one winding from one screw to the other. And here's another winding from one screw to the other. If we attempt to tap them in series, we'd be doing, we'd be putting in a jumper like this. That's what that means. Now let me show you how that's shown on the schematic. When we come back down here, if we look, I just put a jumper between these two items, and that represents this jumper. These come with these little factory jumpers right here. There's two of them on here. I would just move the jumper from one screw to the other, and what I did is I put the jumper between two and three just to let you see that if I was to wire it for 240, that's kind of what this is looking like. 
So if I put this down for a second, you'll see that now by doing that, I've just connected these in series with each other. So if I went from here, I went through this coil, jumped across to pick up this coil, and now those are in series. And if you remember your rules of series and parallel circuits, which is obviously for a different lesson, then you'll understand the turns ratio and what you're going to get out of your transformer when you're done. But in this lab, we're wiring it for 120. So I would simply take that jumper out of there. And we come back down to the diagram. We'd see where these jumpers need to be put for 120. And it shows I got a jumper between H1 and H3. And I got another jumper between H2 and H4. So let's go put that jumper between H1 and H3, which represents this. And the other jumper was between H2 and H4. Now these are wired in parallel. We look down at my enlarged drawing. It's probably easier to see. You can see that I have a jumper between H1 and H3. And this represents your field wiring. I have another jumper between H2 and H4, which represents your other end of your field wiring, which could be your neutral. And now I can bring 120 into that. And the desired result is to get 24 volts out of the secondary. So let's see what we got. If I look, my field attached wiring, according to the diagram, I got to put one wire here and one wire here. Let's go look. I've got one wire here and one wire here. How do you know? Because these markings, these little tiny dots represent screws. So there's one screw, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. And it's showing my field wiring coming off of H1 and off of H4. Well there's H1 and there's H4. That's wired for 120 volts. If we wanted to verify that, we could simply just turn my meter on. We will verify that I have 120 volts. I'll put my meter on here. My meter is across H1 and H4, and I've got 119 volts, exactly what we want, give or take. And if I want to test for 24 volts, I have to go across X1 and X2. So now you say, well, where's X1 and X2? X1 and X2. I've enlarged the drawing once again. If we look at it through a small view from the transformer, X1, X2. And if you really get close enough, you might be able to see in the corner, there's an X1 way off to the right and an X2 way off to the left, which simply means x2 is here, x1 is there. So then you might ask, well, what are these two screws for? These would be for the 12 volt or 24 volt secondary. This only has a one coil secondary, which means I can't make 12 volts. But if this said 12 slash 24, I'd have another different type of tap drawing like the primary, but I'd have it underneath as well on the secondary. And it would show me where to put the taps for 12 volts and where to put the taps for 24, depending if I want to wire in series for 24 volts or parallel for 12 volts. So these actually do nothing on this transformer. They're just part of the stamping or molding process. So they could just kind of make a bunch of the same template. And depending if you need a, a multi voltage secondary, then they would attach wires to these to the coils inside the transformer. If you actually flipped it upside down, there's nothing attached. It's just a dummy, a dummy screw and a dummy lead. Uh, something interesting to know because they do the same thing on the primary. If you only had a, a single primary voltage, this has a dual primary voltage. So that's why I've got wires attached to all these screws in the back. Simple way of verifying that is when you look at this transformer in the lab, pick it up, take a look at it, and you'll see some uh, wire attached to the bottom of the screws. So let's check our secondary voltage. I have to put one across X2 and another one across X1. 
and then check my voltmeter and I've got a little bit high 26 volts which is okay by the time you use it and have a little voltage drop you'll be right back down to 24 volts so pretty cool it's not a hard diagram to understand as far as uh, schematics go but I just really wanted to bring to your attention that uh, a reminder everything has a schematic or a wiring diagram of some kind this is just showing the coil and this is showing the wiring tap schematic if you will of how to put your your factory jumpers that come with it they come in a bag and you have to kind of yank them out of the bag and use them for what you need them for so that's about it uh hope you got a lot out of that and i'll see you at the next video